What's up, fight fans and cannabis activists alike? We're back with another edition of My Marijuana Chronicles, sponsored as always by our good friends at O2 Vape. Make sure you check them out at O2Vape.com. Show some love and use my MMA news at checkout for 20% off your order for the most innovative vape tech around, hands down, period, point blank. I love them. You'll love them too. Use my MMA news at checkout. Get yourself a little discount. On this edition, we have Chris McKinney. He's going to be competing at High Rollers War Games going down this Saturday, November 13th in Las Vegas the city of sin we don't know who he's going to be taking on yet we'll find out when we get there as my mma news will be in the house as well you can catch it on bktv app where you get bare knuckle fighting championships and so many more download bktv app to make sure you catch high rollers war games until then i got my man chris mckinney to talk about high rollers war games and so much more so first and foremost how's training going for it and how's it feel to be competing at war games well first off it's a complete honor to, to be considered, I mean, even to be a part of something like high rollers training is going amazing. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't be in a better place, you know, like kind of like a, a nice, beautiful, calm place like West Virginia to find that balance in and out of training, you know, go to training and come home and just kind of focus on the next session or what I got to do. You know, so it's, it's an, it's an amazing experience in and of itself. You know, and and it's doing a, a good cause for for veterans. You know, so it, it's an absolute honor. And are you actually a veteran in your in you know in any of the military branches yourself, or just competing on the card? I, I served I served in the army, but I okay. didn't go to like I didn't go to no war or anything like that. So it's just kind of something that the way I could give back to my fellow battle buddies. You know. Still, military, a man that serves the country is a, still a man that serves the country. And obviously, we thank you for your service. So, again, it's going to be an honor to see a fellow countryman, well, you know, somebody that served the country on war games. So, let's get straight into it, man. A cannabis user, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, uh, again, being on a card like High Rollers, man, what does it mean to somebody like yourself? Well, first off, it's it's crazy to be, because, like, I, I mean... I'm in West Virginia, Southern West Virginia. It's insane to me that I'm, I could potentially be getting paid in what would put me in jail in my hometown. You know, so like, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm like the first of my kind in this area and kind of like bringing awareness to this area and breaking down the stigma of marijuana because here it's, they're still stuck on that reefer madness bullshit. You know, so if you smoke weed, they think that like you're you're lazy and this and that. So all the stereotypes still apply. So like I'm a successful businessman. I teach a kids class. I, I teach my own and own my own academy. You know, I, I, I do charities. I help out. I, I volunteer. I help with our local police department, teaching jujitsu and training new rookies. Um, the state police train at my academy. So I, it's really good to kind of like be a part of something in and of itself to kind of br bring awareness to something that helps me and veterans alike. You know, it's, it's not what it is. People quit buying the hype. It's not, <laughs> you know, and, and, and no go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I wanted to let you go on your thought, but I mean, that uh, what I find interesting about that is obviously West Virginia, like you said, gorgeous state, but you being almost like a great white buffalo of your state and of it being you help the police force, you have you know your kids classes, you do so much good for the community, yet something that you utilize for your everyday recovery is deemed unacceptable. So it's it's quite the conundrum that you're in right now. It really is. And, and especially like because there is an opiate epidemic and heroin and, and crack and meth, you know, and I go through this like I hurt, you know, when you train like I train. I'm also a professional mixed martial artist, you know, so I spar. I go through I have head trauma. You know, I've had head traumas. I've had incidences from head trauma like, you know, like so and, and to have something I don't even take Tylenol. You know, I, I like I'm not going to say that I don't drink, but like for me to drink is something few and far between, you know, like I'm a cannabis user. That is, that's my, my, like as vice of choice, cannabis, coffee, and water, you know? So like, it's insane to me to be judged in such an area where they consume like high quantities of alcohol and tobacco and fast food. And yet I'm, I'm pinpointed kind of like as the, as you say, the white Buffalo, but <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, man, you guys, this isn't, 
it's not right. You know, that's not how it should be. So it's good to kind of like be part of that. Do you think uh, the the spotlight and potential, like let's just, you know, pending a win at high rollers, do you think that might help bring some awareness to everything that you do for the community and just show, hey guys, look, uh, what we're doing, what we athletes are doing as a whole, it's nothing harmful about it. Like this is stuff we use for our recovery, not as like a party drug. Like you said, like the opiates. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like it's pain management, you know, like like I, I've I've dealt with back injuries and broken bones and arthritis and nerve damage. You know, I'm 34 years old. You know, it may not look like it because I got this southern charm, but like I'm telling you, like I'm, I'm old. I've been in this game for a long time, and I've trained as a competitor. You know, I've traveled, I've trained, and this is what I use for like pain management as well as my mental illnesses. You know, like I struggle with depression and things like mm-hmm. that. So it's just. It's just, and it's actually good for you, you know, like, so, like, I I do, I think that that will absolutely kind of show people, and I've already kind of, like, started that here with, like, my kids class, and because I don't hide it, you know, like, when people talk to me, or, you know, they're like, oh, like, marijuana, or like, and I make jokes about it, you know, all the time, like, oh, I'm like that guy from Half Baked, that kindergarten coach, it's like, good for the kids, you know, <laughs> It's like, I'm that stone guy that's actually good for your children. You know, like you can, your kids can look up to me. It's okay. You know, they're not going to become drug addicts. They actually may become professional athletes and chase their dreams relentlessly. Uh, funny about that because that's exactly the, the, um, the character I use when I talk to people because I am in the elementary school system. I'm an, uh, part, or I'm assistant school teacher full time. And a lot of the parents, the principal, everybody, everybody pretty much knows because I don't make any issue hiding it. Everybody knows that I have my medical card and I don't make any queries when anybody wants to talk to me about it. I don't make any big deal of why I use it. I don't make any like, right. There's no reason to hide it. If you don't have anything to hide, there's no reason to be shady about it. And there's less people that are going to find any shady business about it. So yeah, just found, the, the, the up. If you try to hide something that somebody, yeah. like, that makes people uneasy. But if you're like, hey, what what are you doing? Like, no, I'm not, I'm not hiding anything because there's yeah. nothing wrong with this. Like, this yeah. Is- being upright and honest, one is going to be the perfect thing. And two, all the studies that go behind it, it's 2021. Just do your own homework and you'll find out for yourself. And it's just, it is what it is. But, but, uh, the, the half baked kindergarten teacher is funny because I use that quite, quite often. But, um, so again, uh, everyone has their journey about martial arts. Everybody, you know, has a different path, how they got into it. What was yours exactly? A uh, funny story, my best friend and, uh, coach who is actually the sergeant of the police here. And this is like his little emblem tattooed on my right hand. Um, what is it? He's it's like an alien because he's, oh, okay. long, he's a long, long, lanky guy. Oh, uh, okay. And you see, he's got four arms. Yeah, um, so it's like Goro. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, but he's it feels like he's got like extra arms and stuff sometimes. So it, that's kind of how he got it. But um, I, I actually had like I just got out of the army. I turned like I left straight out of high school. And I was homeless or going to be homeless. So I did and I've been talking to the recruiter and I was like 17 and I got emancipated at a young age, you know, so I was like, I better join something. So I joined um, the military and I come back and I, I really, I didn't know what to do. You know, like I was still a kid. So I started like selling weed and my coach now and best friend at the time was actually a police officer who um, pulled me over in the hood down here. And I, I had like a bunch of weed on me, like selling weed. And he like, um, he kind of like gave me an ultimatum because I was a known, like I wrestled and everything. I, I've always kind of been known as like that troubled kid before I became like the fighter or whatever. And uh, he kind of, and I think I was wearing like a wrestling shirt too. And he was just like, you know, you can either come to, <laughs> you can either come to train at my jujitsu school or, you know, like, we, this will be like a ticket or whatever. And I was like, man, fuck that guy. Like, I never went back. You know, I took the <laughs> ticket. I was like, man, fuck 12, like all that, you know. So then, like, fast forward a couple of years, I'm in college, and I start, like, this wrestling club. 
in in college because for whatever reason like that's all i wanted to do is just grapple and then i started skipping class to grapple and um my mom and her boyfriend came down there and they for sure thought that i was about to be spun out on drugs or drinking or something i'm like what are you doing you know and i'm like i'm fucking wrestling all the time like <laughs> and and so then i was like man if i could just like and i told um her boyfriend who was kind of like fun in the whole thing I was like, man, if I could just train, like, I want to be a fighter. Like, if I could just train, I remember this cop guy told me about jujitsu. And, you know, so he was like, all right, we'll finish out the semester. And, you know, after this semester, he was like, you're dropping out of here. He's like, I'm not paying for this shit anymore. He was like, but I, you're going to have to prove to me that you're not, you know, this isn't just a wash, like college or whatever, you know. And so I came back home, man, and, and, in West Virginia, like it snows and it gets cold. And whenever I started, it was kind of like fall weather or whatever. And then it started like snowing and I was still like riding my bike. I didn't have a license or anything, you know, like, and I was just riding my bike to training every day. I would sleep outside the gym with my bike, like over in the weeds, kind of. And then when everybody would leave, I would hide like over in this cubby hole because they were at the mall. So they had like in the back, they had like mm -hmm. a brick area. So I like, huddle up back there and then like one of my buddies found out that i smoked and that i was doing that and he was like man you can stay with me i'll give you rides and it just from then on out like i just i was like man jujitsu like that was just all i ever cared about yeah. jujitsu and the whole reason i got into mma was to prove that jujitsu is better than everything <laughs> you know I, I, was, I was just so young and so like I was I was brainwashed, I guess. That, that old school Gracie uh, mentality, that Gracie, that jujitsu, ever yeah. everything. But uh, so that makes me curious, man. Diving back in the past, uh, you said you went straight from high school into the military. So, and then when you got out of the military, what made you want to go to college? Was it one of those things where it was like, all right, well, I have to do something? Was it mom and the boyfriend yeah, yeah, saying, I, like, I, I, yeah? I didn't want I didn't want to be broke, you know. Like right, college. right. I've been poor, poor, like my whole life. I grew up in utter poverty. Mm -hmm. And then so like the whole reason that I went to the military, like was to like to get the Bin Laden back or whatever. And mm -hmm. then like to, to like make money. Cause those dudes always have money. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, man, I'm going to make money. Like those dudes always got nice cars. They're always like fresh. They smell good. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to be like that guy. And then I was in the army and I was still broke, you know, and I, I was just like, I need money. So I wanted to go to college and I, I was just, I was like, what's the easiest class that I could take? Yeah. Because, you know, and then I get to college and I'm like, holy shit, I'm, I'm literally just going to build a debt. Yeah. You know, so I freaked when, out. When your, uh, when your friend and the, the police officer, when he gave you that ultimatum, like you can come to the jujitsu school. Uh, you said you grew up rough, but were you into combat sports at that point? Like where, where was the segue where you were like, you know what? I, fuck this guy. I don't want to have anything to do with this, but you were wrestling in college. So, I mean, I'm trying to figure out where the timestamp was. Well, I, I wrestled as a kid. You okay. Know I mean? Yeah. Like, okay. I would go like, so all my friends wrestled, like it was wrestling was like huge in, mm. in my little area, you know, like in the school that I was around was like, like they were all growing up just wrestling and I would fight their ass on the playground, you know? <laughs> and like, so then like, I would like stay with my friends and they would go to wrestling practice, you know? So I was shit. What am I going to do? Stay at their house. And like, you know, so I would go to wrestling practice and then they like would give me their wrestling shoes. And then I saw, I actually like wanted to be on the team. And then, um, I remember like one time, like, like I, I didn't have the grades or something. And I, I like, I was like, you gotta have grades for this shit. Like, mm -hmm. so then I, I was like, man, I'm going to make grades. You know, I'm a, I'm at least going to have a C so I can fucking wrestle. Like, mm. I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I know my last question was kind of a bit ago. Cause then we started riffing after that, but I was going to say similar to the last question of what got you into combat sports. What was, what was that, 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 that notion, that uh, that click that got you into cannabis? Just kind of like how I felt whenever I would like, uh, whenever I would smoke, you know, like it was, it was almost like, if, 
it, it helped me with anything. Like if I was, if I was angry and I needed to calm down, if I, if I needed to hype my stuff up, like it was kind of, it kind of like honed my, my hyper mind into mm-hmm. being able to like focus into a task, so to speak, you know, even and a lot of times, even if that task was getting stoned, I was, <laughs> I was real easy to like focus in on that. And now like combining that with jujitsu, like it, it helps like, the nerves it helps the creative flow like like I, I smoke before i roll or whatever and it's just it's literally like peanut butter and jelly to me you know like it's not about like i don't i don't focus on being strong it's kind of like i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this and then like in training I, i'll try like some new funky shit and and it's it's because i have that confidence and i'm loose with it and my mind's creative you know i'm not really holding on to anything. I'm just focused on what I'm doing, just riding that way. So opposed to other grappling tournaments, like you said, uh, with smoking and grappling and being like peanut butter and jelly for you, there's so many other tournaments across, I mean, the world, really. It has to be a little bit more comforting this time that you can probably even share a joint with your opponent, if not have your own personal one. Hey, man, looking forward to the match and then get into it. Right, right. That's what I was about to say. Um, I won't have to go hide in my car, (laughs) like smoke. And sometimes it's cold. So like you go out and you smoke and you freeze and have to like, it like kills your buzz. And then like you're in and you're like, shit. (laughs) So yeah, like it's, I don't have to go anywhere and it's going to be warm. It's cold here. Yeah, Vegas is going to be, it's going to be a fun time, man, for sure. So uh, outside of the fact of just honing in on mental recovery and like you said, uh, having you know depression and uh, what do you use it for as far as training recovery? As uh, I mean, injuries or is it more for mental recovery? No, man, like, like I said, I have like, I have a bad back. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to bullshit you. Mm-hmm. And my neck, like I have like arthritis and nerve damage uh-huh. in my neck. Yeah. yeah. Like just, and wrestling and bridges and, and inverting. And my back is like through the years is bad. Like I go to PT twice a week, like massages, you know, like, and and some days are better than others. But like here lately, it's just seemed to have been good. But like I use it for pain management. Like, I, yeah. like when I hurt, like I come and like I smoke, you know, yeah. and it, like, even even my children like understand, you know, because like I've explained to them like that this isn't what it, it isn't what they're telling you it is, you know, like this, mm-hmm. you know, like al- alcohol, tobacco, like even fast food are the real killers out here. Like, Exercise and cannabis is not the devil. <laughs> And not only that, but like you said, I mean, judging from a child's perspective, if they, I mean, you taking an Advil, uh, ibuprofen, anything that's in pill form, a child will associate as, oh, well, a pill is okay. And then what pill's not okay from their eyes? And I mean, I, I, I think that probably translates into a lot of adulthood as well. Right. Like what, what, I mean, they just, what could I, you know what I mean? Like what, what can and I can't take? Like, and they mm-hmm. just see you like rifle through the thing and get what you're getting and take it, you know? So yeah. as a kid, if you're trying to mimic, you know, your mother or your father, as they do, you know, they take, they take too many time and all like Cat Williams said, that's going to be your last motherfucking headache. Man. Yeah. Yeah. But if they, if they come in here and they eat some of my weed <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Or I'm in here and I smell a joint and I'm not in there smoking. I don't be like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Exactly. You know, and I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna be like, "Hey, what's up?" Or if they eat the weed, they're not gonna, they're not gonna die. No. You know what I mean? He's just if he he feels anything, he's gonna be all right. Everything will be all right, but uh, yeah, the pills are the slippery slope. The alcohol even is a slippery slope. For, I mean, for a lot of adults, for that matter. But um, so man. getting back in, getting back oh. into high rollers, man. Uh, the uh, the. Your opponent or your brackets or anything, are you going to find out who you're facing that day? Do you know anything about them? Or is it like are everything going to be on the fly that day? Hey, listen, I just got my flight and hotel like last week. <laughs> I have, I have, I, I didn't know where I was going to stay. I didn't know how I was getting there. You just I knew you were rolling. Yeah. Like my, I have a manager and she was like, Hey, we're on high rollers. And I was like, train, let's go. Smoke a little extra weed, work a little extra harder. <laughs> stay the course, stay focused. Like, that, so, that's, 
So a win under the High Rollers brand, does that mean more or that that, that nice pound of me- medicine, let's call it, weed? <laughs> um, I mean, I have to be honest, man. Like, I, it's it's definitely the win. You know, yeah. I'm a competitor, first yeah. and foremost. Of course. You know, like, yeah, I mean, a pound, like, that's, that's awesome. You know, I'm <laughs> really excited. It's always good to get paid. Hey, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Losing is fucking bullshit. It hurts, but, uh, and you know, but it also it's gonna be against somebody like that. I'm gonna have like the utmost respect for, and I'm, I'm probably gonna be looking up to them, you know, because they're a veteran, and you know. So if if you're gonna lose to someone, you're gonna want to lose to that, that guy, you know. And not only that, but I mean, win, lose, or draw, everybody's going to be there having a great time. We're all going to get stoned together, and it's going to be it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be a good time. But uh, so, final thing I have for you: in your opinion, uh, a brand like High Rollers, how does it how does it bridge the gap between and almost closing the gap with some of the stigma that still lingers with cannabis? Because, like you said, in a community like yourself with uh, West Virginia, I mean, uh, there's an opioid crisis. But we just looked at and deemed just as horrible as that. So some of the old school perceptions about marijuana, what do you think a brand like High Rollers has to close that gap? I, I think I think it, it's going to do a tremendous things, first and foremost, for a place like this, you know, to raise awareness for people to see someone that they know doing mm-hmm. that and, and competing and competing at a high level, you know, like this. You, you you're not a slouch if you're a high rollers you know you're not a slouch if you're if you're traveling and competing you know you're not a slouch if you're getting paid to compete you know so it's it's awesome to to kind of have something like high rollers to go mainstream to have the balls to go mainstream the backing the media like they've done everything perfect they they're as big as fight to win and all these other big promotions you know like WNO like they get as much exposure you know they their first event i think had jeff glover everybody mm-hmm. who knows anything about jujitsu has watched jeff glover since they've started you know like mm-hmm. and it's just it's amazing to have somebody or something like that to kind of like bring the mainstream and and blend the two you know like to to kind of make it not such a, a thing like anymore to let people have that inside view and not only that, but to just adding on with what you were saying, piggyback with what you were saying, the the support shown with it between, I mean, Khalifa Kush. I mean, who was at the last event? You had Jorge Masvidal. You have, I mean, Brandon Marino who shows up and, and you know, at the events just to take pictures and have fun there. There's just so many people that are backing it and backing the yeah, cause. Bro. The Diaz brothers. I mean, how can I forget them? Uh, I mean, Green Doctor Green Thumb with Be Real from Cypress Hill as a sponsor. I mean, dude, that I can go on for days about the backing that it has. So it just piggybacks with what you were saying. Just the support that it has. It's it's a recipe for success. Right, and I mean, who doesn't know like Cypress Hill, or even if you don't know <laughs> Cypress Hill, you know Public Enemy. Like, yeah, yeah, and it goes back and back and back. Like, I'm an yeah. old man now, but like old people know about Jump Up Round. Like, it's, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be fun for sure, man. Well, I look forward to meeting you in person. I look forward to seeing you compete on the mat, man. It's gonna be a great time. I appreciate you taking the time tonight, man. Seriously, absolutely, man. I did. It's a complete honor. I thank you. It's been fun. It's been quite an experience, and I I can't wait. I'm I'm excited. I'll Hell yeah, man! There. I will see you there. We'll grab a picture and uh, we'll smoke a joint together. And yeah. there, there he goes, my man, Chris McKinney. He's going to be competing at High Rollers War Games going down November thirteenth, and you can check it out live on the BKTV app, live. And for Chris McKinney, I'm Adam Christ. Make sure you keep it locked to myMMANews.com for all your fight news needs.